Uh, I had been the African Union High Representative on Infrastructure Development for five years. That position gave me uh, an inside picture of what is happening in the AU, what the potentialities are in the AU, what are the challenges and what are the weaknesses that they exist there. I believe that I have sufficient knowledge and experience to be able to move the AU forward. EU is an institution that was founded by the founding fathers of our nation. And their dream was an Africa that was united, an Africa that was cohesive, an Africa that was developed. The development of Africa can only be done by Africans. I am myself a Pan-Africanist and an Afro-optimist. Afro-optimist as opposed to Afro-pessimist. Afro-pessimists are the people who have given hope in Africa, say that Africa is a lost cause, is a condemned continent. Afro-optimists are those who believe in the ability of the African people to develop Africa. That Africa, the richest continent on the planet Earth in terms of resources, is also the poorest in terms of development. This is the paradox that we want to solve. We want Africans to be able to take charge of Africa. We want to expand the communication and trade among the African people. I was telling my brother here that when I was a student in Europe, in the 60s, it was a nightmare to travel across the continent of Africa, sorry, of, of Europe. In Europe, to move from one country to the other, you needed a visa. And if you did not have a visa to transit in one country, they arrested you on the border and returned you where you would come from. Today, you can travel across the whole of Europe the Schengen visa. You want to enter somewhere and you can go to all parts of Europe. Yet in Africa you still have a problem. Aligo Dangote, one of the most prominent African businessmen, was saying just the other day that he needs 35 visas to travel across the continent of Africa. His French counterpart, who is his competitor, does not need using a French passport. With a Nigerian passport, you need 35 visas to travel on the continent of Africa. You ask yourself, why? Why can you not have one African visa? Because it can be done. We can connect the whole of this continent. And that's why I've been talking of the story of African lion. That the African lion must wake up now and claim the 21st century as the African century. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, the Right Honorable Rai Laudinga. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, having listened to Baba, I now wish to make the following concluding remarks. Indeed, despite the world becoming more fragmented and competitive, Kenya believes that multipolarity presents economic and geopolitical opportunities for Africa. Therefore, a whole of AU strategic approach to the emerging world will enable member states to project a common voice on global matters of consequence and enhance Africa's bargaining power for mutual benefit. And indeed, the Right Honorable Raila has summed this up. Therefore, 
for the continent to speak and act as one, the African Union Com Commission Chair will have to, the African Union will have to be more proactive and strategic in overcoming the persistent challenges that beset the African Union, namely funding shortages, logistical inadequacies, and the cyclic nature of conflicts. Additionally, the AU continues to grapple with cases of political instability and economic intricacies, weak international influence, and undue external influence driven by a new Cold War in the continent. As a continent, we therefore need to focus on dimensions that promote our unity and enhance sustainable development for the citizens of Africa. This will include infrastructural connectivity, and he has spoken briefly to that aspect from his previous assignment, reduction in costs of doing business in the continent, accelerating the realization of the visa free program and promoting a common language for Africa. Also important is environmental protection of the climate, climate sorry, yes, yes, in environmental protection of the climate. The continent should work in one voice to campaign for reforms of the international organizations and global financial institutions. The AU should be represented on the strategic international institutions, including membership to core decision-making organs of the UN. We shall promote functional non-alignment that strategically seeks to establish mutually beneficial relationships globally. I may just want to emphasize here that the chairman of the AU Commission also holds the seat for Africa on the G20 forum. Ladies and gentlemen, the candidate, Honorable Raila Odinga, is a renowned champion of Think Africa above all. As per the AU values and inherently motivated by the AU vision, an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa driven by its citizens and representing a dynamic force in the global arena. Our continental body should increase Pan-African awareness among a critical mass of citizens and promote the Africanization of our elites to proudly contribute to Africa's development goals and discourses. Kenya therefore envisions an AU that drives the continent beyond silencing the guns to achieving positive peace, sustainable peace and security for collective prosperity. We have a long experience of supporting the AU and regional bodies as well as bilateral engagements to foster peace and security regionally and globally. We envisage an AU that will give a greater voice to the continental crisis the of, that have often become forgotten conflicts as other global crises elsewhere get huge humanitarian and political attention. As a government and a country, we wish the right Honorable Raila Molodinga God's speed in this noble endeavor for the continent. God bless Kenya and God bless Africa. Asante Nisante. Asante Sana. There could be just a few questions. Thank you, Excellency. We'll have a uh, few questions. We have Bre Brenda Stepford. Thank you so much. I, I have a couple of questions that can be answered by both uh, the candidates, uh, uh, Right Honorable Raila Odinga and uh, the Saudi. 
Oh, sorry. Um, no, no. I have a couple of questions that uh, could be answered by either the candidate, the Right Honourable Rai Laudinga, or the Prime Cabinet Secretary. Um, you have told us quite. Uh, you have told us about the benefits that Africa stands to gain from uh, Mr. Raila's candidature. What does Kenya stand to gain strategically for you going for that AU seat? And secondly, uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary has told us that the President and yourself have been already reaching out to your counterparts from the region and beyond uh, the region, the East African region, uh, trying to get support and push for Mr. Raila's candidature. What is the status of that push? Thank you. Oh, my name is Brenda Wanga from Citizen TV. Okay. Maybe I'll, I'll comment first. Okay. Uh, first of all, a prosperous Kenya is dependent on a prosperous Africa. And we want to make it very clear that as Raila champions issues that affect the Africa continent, Kenya is part and parcel of what he shall be championing. So we are sure that as he moves across the continent. The second aspect of it, from a Kenyan perspective, uh, we must look at it also as this is not a localized issue. It's not. This is a national interest for the people of Kenya to the African continent. And as I said, we see an embodiment of this. Thank you. Well, uh, Africa. So what equivalent to what the rest of Africa is going to get? If improve as a beneficiary, that's only fifteen percent. Inter European trade stands at seventy percent. Inter Asian trade is now. Even South America, has not trade with itself for reasons some of which you see there are non-tariff barriers uh, in, uh, into it's very difficult for. Good Infrastructure challenges that makes it very difficult for Africa to trade with itself. You know, Africa continent is now two years old, but still very little. So these two, as the high representative, I knew I realized the challenges. Like you've been talking about intra-African highways, the Cape to Cairo, the Dakar to Djibouti, Dakar, Lagos, Lagos, Mombasa, and so on and so forth. We've been talking about the continental high-speed railway network, one Beira to Valvis Bay. One, the old Benguela line, Lobito to Lubumbashi. The other one is the high speed railway and, and along the coast from Lagos to Cairo. The other one is our Lapset, the Lamu Port, South Sudan, Ethiopia Transport Corridor, which as a representative of the AU on, uh, high, high, uh, on infrastructure 
we actually extended from Juba through Bangi in Central African Republic to the port of Cameroon to create a land bridge that links the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean and opening up the interior of the continent which are landlocked for trade. See, for example, Kenya grows tea. How does Kenya export its tea to Central African Republic? Between Kenya and Central African Republic, there's only South Sudan. South Sudan is the only country between Kenya and Central African Republic. But how do you take the tea there? There's no infrastructure. You have to find a ship that will go around the Cape, along the western coast, to the Cameroonian port of Douala, and then by road to Bangui. The French are there ahead of you. That's why they drink in Bangui Kenyan tea, Christian as English breakfast tea. But with an upset, we can be able to take our goods there. But this infrastructure cannot be developed country by country. You need to have a mechanism at the center that is coordinating funding for this infrastructure. If you want to do the lab set, Kenya can only do its part up to the border with South Sudan. Then South Sudan needs to take it from there to the border with Central African Republic. Central African Republic takes it to Cameroon and to it there. But you need a center to be able to coordinate funding, to mobilize funding for this infrastructure development, which are cutting across the continent. That is why those things have not been done. That's why even the trans-African highways have not been done, and so on. So getting there, we are also talking about the high-speed uh, fiber optic network connecting all the African capitals. We are talking about open skies to be able to move freely in the uh, uh, African airspace without so much impediment. At the moment, traveling across Africa is a major problem. Recently, when I was going to the funeral of uh, the president of Namibia, we had an aircraft here. We had to spend three hours at Wilson Airport waiting for clearances of airspaces of the, the transit countries. You have to get a clearance to fly over in Tanzanian airspace, DRC, Zambia, Botswana, and Namibia itself. And it's expensive. The other day, I was in Dar es Salaam going to Niamey in Niger. There, you had spent 10 hours waiting. You need a clearance over Uganda, over DRC, over the Central African Republic, over Cameroon, Nigeria, and Niger. And that is what is making the air transport in the, in the continent so expensive. It is easier to move goods by air. It is need to put the facilities across the continent. And then have also an African continental air traffic control. In Europe, you only need one permit and you can fly all over the countries of Europe. Here, you need to get permission from Nairobi, Dar es Salaam, uh, Kinshasa, uh, Lusaka, uh, going down those sides. So all this is what is making uh, uh, inter-African trade difficult. I've told you about the issues of visas. It's an, another, another, another problem. Uh, and so on and so forth. We've been talking about na making the Nile River nav navigable so that you can be able to, tra 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 to move from Mediterranean Sea to Lake Victoria. Ships can move from Europe and don't, don't have to go around the Horn to come to the, our coast the other side. You can go the right on the Nile to Lake Victoria and land there in Ginger in uh, Kampala, in Kisumu, and in Mwanza. Those are some of the, 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 the projects that will be done. And if you open up those way, Kenya will be a major beneficiary, uh, and Africa generally. So we have ideas which we think, if implemented, 
will improve the inter-African trade. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, in the interest of time, Your Excellency, we are unable to take more questions because the Prime CS is needed somewhere in Nandi in the next few. <laughs> more? Okay, one question. Excellencies, my name is Mwangi Maina from the ECLE Voice. First question to the former Premier. Some Kenyans and some Africans feel that uh, Nairobi fronting your candidature is a way of settling domestic political scores. Do you think you're exporting domestic politics to Addis Ababa? Uh, the other question to you, former Premier, it's about the Kenya stance, uh, Kenya, Kenya openly standing with Israel which has been committing a genocide in Gaza. Do you think this could potentially impact your candidature uh, at the African Union Commission next year uh, because of such global geopolitical standing? Asante Mwangi, thank you. No, I mean, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Kenyan, and I've, as I mentioned, nobody has asked me. The, the Kenya government did not ask me. I made a decision myself that I want to offer myself to serve the continent. And uh, as you know, you cannot run for this position without being sponsored by your, your, your country. Your candidature is not valid until your country has said yes. So I was myself pleased and surprised that the Kenya government said they would support me. I was expecting them to say no. I don't know the reason why they said yes. <laughs> that is their own decision, it's not mine. <laughs> I, I will, I'll tell you why we said yes. We said yes because Raila is competent. Yes. And we are looking at Kenya's national interests and Africa's national interests. So this is not about our local issues. And we do not want, and we really want to get the fourth estate to help us to project the national interest of Kenya because it would be a first for Kenya and it would be an opportunity for Kenya to offer leadership to the African Union. And Raila Amolo Odinga has the, got the requisite experience. As I said in another forum, he has seen both hot and cold and Africa is beaming with both hot and cold and Raila is required on the African continent. Your Excellency. My on the issue of Israel, it's just, I think yesterday, the Gaza uh, issue, I issued a very clear statement on behalf of the Republic of Kenya, where I said that Kenya stands for a two-state solution, so that Israel stands as a nation, and the people of Palestine should also have their state as a nation. So under no circumstances is Kenya favoring one against the other. What is important is that the conflict in the Middle East, like in other where there is conflict elsewhere, we call for a peaceful resolution as soon as possible because the humanitarian crisis is huge. Your Excellency, my name is Jeff Kirui from KTN News. Jeff, yes, we are we, we are done, Jeff. Just please, please, question. Jeff. Please, Your Excellency. Tafadali, Prime and Anafar Kwanza Bali. Tafadali, let's end it there. Yes, the question is regarding ESC. They have been pushing for one candidate. The newest kid on the block, Somalia, has its candidate. In the eastern region, we have Djibouti and Seychelles who also have candidates. Is it a concern to you that this might complicate matters considering the two-third requirement to clean the seat? And also, could you clarify on the composition of your campaign team? As I said here, that we are focusing on Kenya's candidates. Yeah. Other countries that have their wish to front a candidate will speak about their own. Yes. But for now, uh, as far as we are concerned, we have a long journey to go to campaign, and our candidate is Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. And as I indicated in my earlier remarks, that the strategy is in place, and we shall be looking at all the challenges and opportunities as we go along. And I think I should also tell you that 
Subsequent to this, I think the lady had asked, I want to emphasize that our president had, has also made several strides in talking to his counterparts across Africa. And all that, I'm sure, will count for something in the next few months. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are now going to the next session, photo session, very quickly. Uh, can I be assisted to move the podiums, please? So we'll have this one, then we'll have one group photo of the principal flanks by senior government officials while seated. Thank you. Okay. Can I be assisted to bring the seats They're here? The seats are here. Seats, seats. 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 Seats, Bring us. Mushmo and I, you can flank them from Konyuma Hivu, Nawingine, Chief, please. Yes, yes. Hmm? Okay, in ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.